Hey guys, Tony here. I'm down in Adelaide at the Crix factory. I finally arrived and I get to see how all of the speakers are put together. I've got Phil and I've got Michael and we're gonna go through each of the stages of fabrication from start to finish. And you guys are gonna get to see a behind the scenes on how one of these awesome Australian made speakers are put together. So let's go. So here we have uh, our, a couple of our Blackwood boards. Um, this is in the early stages. You'll notice that there's a lot of grain, a lot of open grain and a lot of texture there. We do our most of our timber veneer finishes in a full choke, which means it gets about three days worth of prep work before we even make it into a speaker because we seal it so that it's like a mirror finish. If you look at this board here, this board here is ready to be machined and turned into uh, any of our products that are a uh, proper blackwood finish, like this uh, uh, graphics here. So it takes about three days worth of sanding, sealing, curing, and then repeating to get it to that state. So the, the sort of dusty look is because it's been sanded, yeah. and that is what you call full choke, meaning there's yep. no ridges, it's a completely flat surface. Yeah, that's And it. at this stage then you'd clean it and then you'd apply paint, is that right? Yeah, so, so at, the, at this stage, um, it's, it's fully choked and fully prepped. We use top coat, which is less build. It doesn't fill the gaps because there's no gaps to fill. And that just gives it that final look. You'll notice the, the texture difference. And yeah, so this board here is ready for an order to come in and to go onto one of our CNC machines to turn into a Phoenix or any other veneer product. So guys, the first stop on the trip is to see this CNC machine. And this is where all of the speakers are cut um, from the raw MDF and um, whatever material they're using to make the speakers. So Phil, why don't you tell us a little bit about this machine behind you? All right, so this is our BSE five axis CNC machine. It's one of two five axis CNC machines that we have. Um, it's one of our newer installments. Um, the fifth axis, it gives us a greater control over our tolerances. With our machining, our tolerances, we calibrate to a 0.2 of a millimeter. The idea is uh, it's got a quick change carousel at the back. There's a multitude of different tools. So from here, we take full sheets of MDF and we cut, cut out miters and uh, do a full miter construction. We don't really use edging and, and stuff like that. So you, you create it so that you can fold it into the shape of the speaker in one like a, like yeah, holding yeah. a box so we, together. So cut, cut the miners out. Right, guys, you've just seen the CNC process and now we're over at the assembly stage and this is a carcass that's just been cut by the CNC. This is a Phoenix speaker, I think from looking at it because I actually own a set of these. And um, we're going to hand over to Jody and Phil and they're just going to explain the process while they put it together. So, so what Jody's doing now is she's putting in the driver inserts uh, blackening the edges so that you, you can't see any raw MDF through the, the rebates. Um, from here, what she's gonna do is she's going to glue all the miters, put the bracing in, and then fold the cabinet in a full miter construction. Funnily enough, we actually use sticky tape to hold it together while it's drying and put it through our curing bay. Uh, this is a veneer product, it's Blackwood, uh, Blackwood Phoenix. Um, the tolerance is a 0.2 of a mil because getting that gap just right so that you don't have any chip outs is, is quite an artwork. So Jody's just applying a generous amount of glue to all the miters to make sure we don't get any buzzes or rattles. You'll notice that any, any point of contact with the wood always has um, glue to ensure that um, nothing's going to move after its assembly process. Now we're putting the top on. Back 
That's to keep the MDF traveling in a consistent way so that the veneer grain follows the mm -hmm. rest of the product. So Jody's just about to apply the sub base. Uh, at a later date, this will get a, a vinyl base and rubber feet put on it in the final assembly process after painting. We leave the bottom cavity open so that we can get the paint jig to fit through to get a full rotation on it to ensure that our paints are uh, even and done in one, one month. Now it goes into the curing bay. And that's it. And that's it. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Jaden, for showing us the process. So guys, here's the LX7. I'll be reviewing one of these very soon. So once the product's been detaped and any excess glue has been wiped off and the edges have been arised, we stick them on our special made jigs that are custom made for each of our products. And the idea of this is to get a full 360 access to the entire speaker box. So we can paint it all in one setting, which gives a much better finish. All oh, right, so you use the, where the speaker terminal unit is plugged, is yeah. connected. Depending on the product. I mean, our new phonics, you'll probably notice that the baffle is a different material to the cabinetry itself. So with the new phonics, you would mount the cabinet where the baffle goes to, right. to get that that access. So you turn the handle so you can yeah. rotate it, to, rotate where it to a different angle to paint it. So this is where you can maneuver things around. And then if you, is it pull? Yeah, I think so, I push. And once you put it in place, you can see it locks it into place so that they can work on it. And then just flicking it allows you to move it around, which is pretty awesome. And Phil designed this system. So after the two day curing from a, our finished top coat from Paint Shop, it comes through to final assembly where it gets its final QC checks. And this is what we call the pre-assembly side of final assembly, which is generally entails uh, the dampening of the product, uh, the vents, uh, and crossovers. All of our crossovers are designed here um, to specific specifications. And what speaker is this that we're assembling here? Uh, this is a graphics in Blackwood. So this is so a center speaker? This is matching a, the a acoustics? center speaker that's, that's, that's built to go hand in hand with the, the acoustics. Uh, all of our drills here are pneumatic to save work uh, load on our staff carrying drills and holding drills up. The torque setting is actually the brake. There is no on off trigger other than pushing down. So Ryan loads the screw, presses down and the screw gun will continually go until it reaches a specific torque setting that's preset by Ryan. And we have a made in Australia sticker. Very rare these days. So guys, any questions that Crick speakers are made in China is false. We are here in Adelaide and you just saw the Australian made sticker go on the back. And we also have Phil, he's made in Australia as well. <laughs> so this is putting, connecting the drivers up. Driver assembly. Yep, this is kind of what we call the final assembly process, which is the last steps. So now he's uh, installing the base drivers, tweeters, there's a QC process in like visually before before they're installed and then there'll be an acoustic QC process uh, once it's all put together. Final clean before the grill goes on. And then onto the test chamber. We do have an additional curing bay in between um, pre-assembly and final assembly, which is what we're looking at here. And that is for some items that still need glue on their vents and stuff like that to expedite the uh, curing process.
So each speaker has a unique uh, serial code that's generated by our own our own personal database. And uh, once it has a serial code, it can be tested. We record all of our data against the serial code that's tested. So if someone has a product that arrives DOA, we can actually go back through the history and load up the exact test data from that product as it's traveled through, which gives good accountability for um, all of our products and all of our processes. As you see there, Ryan's, Ryan's already scanned the, the barcode in. So this is, the test is far more complicated than just saying good or bad. It's also a diagnostics tool, as well as it records the data, as I mentioned earlier. The idea of the test chamber is it can, it can filter out any ambient noise. If you've got someone, you know, using an airline or the air conditioner is going or a spray boost going and it's making quite a lot of ambient noise, the test chamber can filter all that out. Therefore, our tolerances can be tighter and truer to the product itself and how it's measured. So the rack behind us is our stocking levels of, of finished grills. Um, we try to have all the parts locked and ready to go for as soon as, as soon as we get a cabinet that's required for an order or for stock. So what we have is we have a supply of the top selling products pretty much. Uh, we use a contact adhesive, which we like to give 24 hours before packing any grills after they've been sprayed and covered. Aiden's going to give us a demonstration of how to put a speaker drill together. So Aiden's just waiting for the contact adhesive to tack off a little bit so that it sticks before he gets started. So Aiden's currently covering a 1570 grill, which is uh, one of our commercial cinema products. And this one is permanently attached to the speaker? Yeah, it, it, instead, of, instead of having a grill clip, making it removable, we'll actually use a soldering iron to cauterize the, the cloth so that there's a hole to run a through screw, permanently fixing it to the speaker itself. Obviously, in a, in a commercial cinema environment, you want to make sure that there's absolutely no way a grill can fall off, even 20 years after it's put up. Made that look easy. Yeah, <laughs> and then that's pretty much done. And that's done. The badge on and there we go. This is the Crix badge going on. Yeah. So you have a template for that. Wow, if you hold that up for us, that's great. Thank you very much. So these look familiar to me, Phil. What are these? These look like new phonics baffles. Yeah, these are new phonics baffles um, that take almost as long as the cabinets to, uh, to, to process. As you can see, we've got some epicentrics down the bottom here. So we try to keep a good stock supply of that so that we can turn around uh, any orders that we've got nice and quickly. Yeah, when I first saw these, I told Michael I thought they were injection molded plastic. And then yeah. he told me that they were CNC from MDF. 25 mil raw MDF. And they get probably more coats than a, than a speaker cabinet would. There's a lot, of, a lot of sealing and a lot of sanding to get that to the, the matte finish that it is. Yeah. Matt, and Matt, if anyone who knows paint knows that Matt shows everything. And this is the... Yeah, that's, that's a raw unprocessed. A raw version. unprocessed version before it gets painted. Yep. As and you can see, they're quite porous on any of the machine edges and all of that needs to be sanded and filled. Yeah, so a lot of detail work you can... This is how I knew because you can see this area there. It's got that nice pattern and shape to it that make them distinctly new phonics. Um, as you can see, all of our veneer products get wrapped in cell air, which is just to ensure that um, any friction that they sustain throughout the transit 
is absorbed by the, the packing instead of the product. And that's the special material to avoid polishing yeah, it, of the veneer, right? It, avoid, it avoids gloss, gloss marks and scratches. As you can see, it's kind of like wrapping a Christmas present. Ryan takes great care in making sure that it's, <coughs> it's done properly and to a high standard. So we'll follow Ryan over to the box, placing it in the box. <clears throat> With the foam edging pieces, corner pieces. Fantastic. Off to a customer. Thanks, Ryan. So guys, that concludes the tour. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. I'd like to thank Michael and Phil for taking us through the factory and showing us all of the small things that go into building these awesome Australian made speakers. So let me know down in the comment section what you think. If you have any questions at all, also leave them down below. But that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Right for now. See ya. Let's go. All right. We walk this way, you walk that way. That's all good. So I'm gonna let's cut. go. I'm gonna I'm cut out. it there. <laughs>